the moment I was lost in confusion. It's the moment you realize there's no way out. It's a moment of being lost in your own body and a moment of tears. Let's call it way too far out of the comfort zone. The quality and the richness you can find in a moment like that is the feeling of being fearless. Fear, a complexity itself, it's gone. There's no more power to fight against something. It's this feeling of accepting life. And in this feeling of accepting life in all of its beauty and bigger meaning, the true strength inside of me brings me back to focus. That's why, for me, the quality of confusion is presence. I was standing there at the Sochi Olympics as one of the top riders of Austria in the first competition out of two. And I was hiding my tears with this huge black mirrored snowboard goggle, trying to figure out myself and how, how I should explain this failure to the world and to this camera. I was as ready as it gets. And it was the most iciest slope I've ever seen and snowboarded on. And I failed. Mm -hmm. I slipped away and got disqualified mm -hmm. twice. I don't even know my result. I, I never looked it up. I finished 30 something. And I was ready, you know? And I was so about winning Olympic gold because the second place never made it to my heart. And me as an athlete, I know my history. And it starts when a little kid falls in love with snowboarding the very first time. Starting a journey with no glory guaranteed, trying to achieve something no one in Austrian snowboarding history has ever achieved before. That was the mission I was on. That was the mission my heart was on. And at the same time, my mind trying to figure out how, how I should explain that. But before I tell you more about Sochi, let's fill up your gap. The gap of the 1,000 invisible steps. Because standing there at the start gate is the last step visible. I grew up in the very east part of Austria. There are no mountains. No skiing, no snowboarding. <laughs> and this leads to the most boring question asked over and over and over again. How is it even possible to become a snowboarder growing up in Burgenland? <laughs> <laughs> and this question is so boring to me because it never made it to my heart. I never spent a single thought about it. It was never on my radar, because I'm a snowboarder, and I'm from Burgenland, and I never questioned it. 
So I was all about movement when I was a little bit little kid. And nature was my playground. And I was visualizing and daydreaming. And I was climbing the high streets with my brothers, and my whole life was about adventures. And then we were going to this winter holiday, and I was falling in love with snowboarding. And it happened that in the same week, Hermann Mayer won two gold medals. So I got all inspired, and only imagining becoming an Olympian was like playing with magic. And my heart was intuitive, hiding and protecting this magic, because I didn't want anyone to talk me out of that. But all of those dreams and all of my mindset was shaking when I was 13. It was that day which ended my childhood. I questioned life. And the first time in my life, something felt impossible to overcome. It felt impossible to strap on a snowboard ever again. On the 11th November 2000, I was ready to hit the slopes with my brother and my best friends and teammates. And we were all same crazy. We were those lowland kids trying to achieve something in winter sport. And we were pushing each other, and we were standing up. We were crazy enough to set the alarm at 3 AM on a Saturday, to leave at 4, to catch the first lift. And I was already training about 20 hours a week when I was 11. And the conditions, they seemed to be perfect that day. It was sunny, fresh powder. And our friends, they were slightly delayed. My brother and I, we were standing in line to catch the funicular railway up the mountain. And we keep there for a while. And I don't know why. And my brother asked, why are we not taking the gondola up instead? And I was a little bit confused, because the fastest and usual way up there is the funicular railway. And it's quite a hike back to the gondola. Maybe I was just tired and not in the mood of discussing. So I just followed. Taking this gondola instead <coughs> saved both of our lives. 155 people died that day in Kaprun, in one of Austrian's biggest disasters. All of my friends, our whole team. And it's this fine line between life and death. And I lost so much at that moment. Obviously, I lost my friends, but at the same time, I also lost my faith and the trust in the world. Two months later, I was back on a snowboard. And honestly, <laughs> I felt safer to have this huge goggle to hide my tears. It was snowboarding that connected us, and it was the sport that made my body feel alive again. And it took me years to regain my confidence and to come back from that. But I just didn't want to give up the dream we shared. So I threw myself back into training. And I made my way up into the national team. I achieved multiple 
World Cup podiums to silver medals at the World Championships. But those medals, they were achieved in setbacks. I suffered several career-threatening injuries. Two ACLs, I broke my left ankle, I torn all the ligaments in my right, I dislocated my shoulder, I had a lot of concussions, which finally ruled me out of the Vancouver Winter Olympics. And missing that, I was so close to quit snowboarding at that point. And I realized there are only two options left. I can change myself totally, or I have to stop. I don't believe in coincidences. I believe life is about the light that we share. And it's about the struggles and the fears which are leading us back to our inner light. I am all about huge goals. A goal is only big enough if it scares me and excites me at the same time. And I was using trial and error to find ways for myself, bringing me back into a resourceful state of mind. Yoga, mental coaching, and for sure, hard work. And this brings me back to this interview at the Sochi Olympics, at my first competition. And I was standing there, and the only sentence which came to my mind was, I, I'm sorry, but I forgot my skating shoes. <laughs> and it looked like I failed. But you never know, because life is the teacher. And I trust the teacher, because I'm all about intuition. I switched my snowboarding brand at the last World Cup before the Olympics. And that's, that's stupid. That's a no-go. And I was riding this board only twice. Once to qualify for the Olympics, and the second time brings me to Sochi, three days after I lost. I was standing in the big final, the final between gold and silver. I was behind with 72 hundredths of a second, and that's a lot. But at one point, though, everything I worked towards was in balance. And I had no doubt that I'm going to win. Standing on a cliff with my snowboard, or dropping in into Olympic final. That's what I call flying. It takes this deep inner trust of letting go, of letting go of everything. And it's this combination of confidence, of skills, and the will. It's a decision to win or lose. And it's all on you. And performing simple in all of this complexity that's known as the flow state. Going. Das ist natürlich 
diese acht Zehntel, diese sieben Zehntel vor die Nuvitz ins Rennen gegangen. Kastens noch vorne. Dulmowitz holt ein bisschen auf. Kastens, Dulmowitz. Ja, ja, Julia ist dran. Noch ist Kastens leicht vorne. Ah, Fehler von Julia Dulmowitz. Sie bleibt dabei kurz. Dulmowitz oder Kastens. Dulmowitz hält sich doch einmal an die letzten Tore. Dulmowitz oder Kastens. Komm, Julia, das kann sich doch ausgehen. Julia Dulmowitz oder Anke Kastens. Olympisches Gold für Julia. That's how I won the Olympic gold medal. The first Olympic gold medal for snowboarding in Austria. And the first ever gold medal for my home state in any sport. <laughs> and sometimes, I still cannot realize it because it was quite a journey. And you now can see all those little steps, what you need before to achieve a goal like that. And every huge goal achieved starts with a vision and with a dream. And with this commitment and will that no matter what's going to happen, that you go for it. And it's all achieved in being fearless. Make sure that fear is your best friend, because it will guide you to your potential. And sometimes, you cry, and sometimes you fly. But most importantly, you need to shine. <laughs> <laughs>